Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Terrific Tuesday. Today, I invite you to look with me at Genesis, the 43rd chapter, verses 19 through 34. A very powerful message that God gives to us. And it's a message in which I have entitled, We Have Been Here Before. The, the brothers uh, uh, of Joseph are now at the household of Joseph. As they're at the entrance, they begin to meet him as they come into Egypt. And God does something very powerful for them there. They take everything that God has given to them. They give it to Joseph. They give it to his manager so they can have everything that they need to bring back to feed the rest of their family. And so we find out here in this passage as the household manager receives them, as he gives them everything that they need, we find out that Joseph tells his guy, put back in their sack again, all the money that they have paid me with and put it back and send it back with them. So when they begin to meet Joseph, they come into his palace. Joseph invites all of them in. He sits down. He begins to eat at his table. All the rest of his leadership eats at their table and the brothers are eating at their table. Well, it's part of the reason that we find out that they're all in different tables because they had a, a caste system. Joseph ate by himself. Joseph ate at his table. His men who worked for him ate at their table and no one dared eat with the Hebrews because they did not believe that they should mingle. Now, this text begins to help us to see how God is doing great and marvelous things, even in the midst of a situation that these brothers have no idea what is about to happen to them. Now, he says, how is your father? How is the old man? Tell me about him. Is he still alive? They said, yes. Joseph, our father is still alive. And he said, that's good to hear. He says, how about your brother? Tell me about Benjamin. How is he? And Benjamin is right there with them. Joseph begins to uh, see how God is about to move in this circumstance. Joseph hurries from his room because he's overcome with emotion. He finds out his father's alive. His baby brother, Benjamin, is still alive. He goes in a private room and in this private room, he breaks down and he cries. This begins to help all of us see that sometimes we have emotional moments that should not be displayed in the front of people. You know, we oftentimes remember how God is doing great things in us. Joseph has a emotional breakdown. He is overcome. He is overcome with tears. He finds himself in a place that he wants to make sure that nobody sees him at this state. You know, so many times you and I, we're heartbroken. We must make sure that we do what we find out in this text. God wants us to be vulnerable to him, but not to those who might bring harm to us. Joseph does not want them to know who he really is because he hides himself. You know, so oftentimes you and I, we hide ourselves from each other. But can we ever hide from God? Joseph realized he cannot hide from God. That's the reason he goes into a private room. Joseph decides that where he is all by himself is a moment where he needs to be, how he needs to let it all out. My brothers and sisters, sometimes you and I, we need to let it all out. We need to get rid of all of those things that are in us, those things that are holding us back, those things that are holding us up. Those things that we have held on the inside, Joseph gets it all out, but he doesn't disclose it to everyone else. Joseph is now back in the room and while he's in the room, he begins to eat. And as he eats and as he sits down, there's wonder and amazement because he begins to seat all of his brothers and they don't even recognize him. He sits them from the oldest to the youngest. They could not understand how would he have known that, but he positioned them. And five times he begins to bless them. Five times he begins to let them eat all of what they want. Joseph gives them more than they have ever would have imagined. He gives them new garments. He gives them everything that they need when they are ready to go back home. My brothers and sisters, God will give us everything that we need when we are ready to go back home so that we can go back better than we've ever been. I hope that you will always know that you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed and God has a great blessing in store for you. And we'll look forward to sharing with you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Fountain.